Greetings, my name is Siobhan Hancock with the New Mexico Department of Health Obesity, Nutrition and Physical Activity Program. Healthy Indigenous cooking is part of a statewide effort to reduce obesity, diabetes and other chronic diseases in Indian country using traditional Native American recipes. New Mexico is home to 23 distinct tribes, pueblos and nations, each with its own culturally different foodway. This webinar series focuses on healthy meal preparation of Southwest Native American recipes using indigenous ingredients available in New Mexico. You may substitute some items with local produce or spices from your area. The recipe and other cooking sessions are available online. See the resource slide at the end of this presentation for more information. Healthy Indigenous Cooking is sponsored by New Mexico Department of Health. This program is partly funded by Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program for Education, SNAP-Ed, and the CDC. Let me introduce you to our chefs. Lois Ellen Frank, PhD, is the chef owner of Red Mesa Cuisine, a Santa Fe, New Mexico-based catering company that specializes in Indigenous Native American cuisine and cultural education with a modern twist. Lois cooks alongside Native American chef Walter Whitewater, who works with Chef Frank in Santa Fe, New Mexico. He was one of the first Native American chefs to cook at the James Beard House in New York City. For more information about our chefs, please watch the Session 1 video or go to their website at redmesacuisine.com. Session 3, Handmade Tortillas and No Fry Fry Bread and the nixtamalization process. Let's get started with Chef Lois Ellen Frank and Chef Walter Whitewater. Hi everyone, my name is Lois Ellen Frank and this is Chef Walter Whitewater and we both are of Red Mesa Cuisine in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And we're gonna do some cooking today, show you how to make homemade corn tortillas and then we're going to do no fry fry bread and blue corn no fry fry bread. So we have a lot to teach you and we're very excited. Chef Walter's going to be filming while I talk. We're going to do a little talk about the history and then we're going to show you how to make these amazing dishes. Mm -hmm. All right, so Chef Walter's right. going to go behind the camera and I will start to talk. So corn tortillas are so healthy and very, very important part of the history and the tradition of Native American cuisine. The term nixtamalized corn or nixtamalization actually goes back to the southern speaking tribes, uh, Nahuatl speaking tribes of Mexico. And it's so amazing to think that the ancestors took ash, so ash from the burning of bushes, and we still see that in many of the Pueblos, Walter's tribe, uh, the Navajo use juniper ash. Uh, many of the Pueblos use uh, either the chamisa, which is rabbit bush, or uh, the four-winged salt bush. Uh, one of my students at IAIA, uh, who is from San Felipe, they actually use some onion ash for flavoring. But the ash, when mixed with the corn, not only increases the nutritional value of the corn, but it helps to remove the skin. So here we have native corn. This is what we call Native American field corn. And we have a blue, uh, a white, a red, and then there of course is a yellow. And it, when we take this corn and we soak it in ash overnight, and then we cook it in ash, it loosens the skin when it cooks. And you can just take your fingers and get that skin off. Once you get the skin off here in New Mexico, and then you dry it, the whole kernels, it's called pasole. In other parts of the United States, it's called hominy. And so different parts of the United States call things differently. So pasole can also mean a stew, but pasole that we're talking about here is the corn that's been treated. Now, uh, many people today, especially like at the Santa Fe Farmer's Market, use a food grade lime. And when you buy masa, it says corn treated with lime. So this corn that's been treated can either be left whole, 
We're going to do uh, future classes where we cook this hominy or this cassoli, or it can be ground into a powder. This powder is called masa arena. It's also called corn flour. Arena meaning flour. And so that's what we're going to use today to make our corn tortillas. And there are many different brands. And you'll use whatever, whatever brand you have or have access to. I'm going to tell you my favorite brand. My favorite brand is actually uh, King Arthur because it's organic. And this is an employee-owned company. I really like this and this works great but this masa for corn tortillas is also the same masa that's used for tamales right so we're using the same masa the same flour uh this is another brand maseca and so uh quaker oats there are many 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 brands and all the brands will work so this nixtamalized corn is much healthier, especially in the past when it was made with ash, because the ash added nutrients. It added calcium. And uh, there's been some studies of uh, one student at the Northern Arizona University did a study on different kinds of culinary ash. And just to contextualize it, uh, one gram, which is about the equivalent of a paper clip, right? Not very much has the same amount of calcium as an eight ounce glass of milk. So this ash traditionally very important in our native culture, in our native cuisine and in our native foods. And that's the origin of this particular uh, dish. And corn tortillas can be eaten with anything. You can make tacos, you can put jam or jelly on it. You can fill it with beans. You can eat it plain. Uh, I like to put a little hummus on it. You could put avocado or salsa. So there's a lot of application. It's a very healthy bread because it's a flat bread. And flat breads, when you eat them, are digested slowly, which means they're low glycemic, so it won't spike your blood sugar. So it's a great bread uh, for any diabetics. And it has the nutrients and it uses corn. And corn, of course, is one of the most sacred ingredients in Native American history and Native American cuisine tradition. In all the tribes, from as far south as it'll grow to as far north as it'll grow, corn is the essence of life. And so corn, very, very important. So let's get cooking. Uh, we're going to start with uh, a recipe today, and we're going to use um, some masa. I'm going to add the salt. So we're using kosher salt, and we're going to add that. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of water. And the water is going to depend on how dry it is. So we always start with uh, the least amount. And I usually start with a spoon. And then um, after I uh, have it mixed, then what I can do is uh, I can use my hands. And so you want to either wear gloves or you want to make sure you have no jewelry on, no nail polish. So we're going to take our water and we're going to mix. And the recipe says one and a half to two cups. Uh, and then we'll tell you how many tortillas that will make. But you want to start with a small amount. And again, depending on how many people you're feeding, you could double or triple this recipe uh, to make more. So once that dough gets fairly moist, you're going to take your hands and mix it together. Now, the thing you want to remember is that we want to make the dough as moist as possible without it sticking to the side of your bowl. So moist, but not too moist. And it will dry out. What you have to remember is as it sits, it will dry out. So you'll notice I'm turning the bowl. And look at that beautiful masa. I'm trying to get all of it off the side. And we want to, oh, and the smell. The smell of the corn is so delicious. So, uh, mm, this is one of my favorite things to do. And even if you didn't grow up, with a mom that made these or a grandma that made these, it's really easy to do. And what you have to remember is practice, practice, practice. The more you do it, 
the better and the quicker you get. And in the time it takes to order those tortillas or go to the store and buy them, you could have made it. So now we have a beautiful, beautiful dough. See how it's moist, but it's not sticking to the bowl. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make our balls and we're going to make our tortillas. In the background, I have either a kamal, which is a flat griddle or a cast iron pan. Many of you may have a flat griddle in your kitchen. Uh, and that is on. We want to put that on so that it's nice and hot. And then I have a tortilla press. These are inexpensive and I'm going to show you chef's secret. So the chef's secret is I have taken a plastic bag. This is a freezer bag. Doesn't matter what brand. And I've cut it to match my tortilla press. Okay. So maybe chef Walter can show everybody that here's the circle and here it is. All right. And that's to keep the dough from sticking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our masa and we are going to make a, oh, about the size. Well, okay, it depends. I like to do ping pong golf ball size. And I'll show you what size tortilla that makes. I think this is a nice size. You could go smaller or you could go a little bit larger. So we put that down. Now we close and then we press. And look how easy this is. What we've done is our tortilla is now in between the bag and I can peel it off and put it in the pan. Okay, so let's do a couple more so that we have some, maybe we'll do like four so we can put those in uh, before we cook them. So same thing. We're going to make our ball, right? It should not be sticking. So the masa should not be so wet. And then we're going to put that in the middle, in between the bags. We're going to press down. And here is, I love this because it's really, really easy. And you're going to get so fast at this. So that's a nice size, right? And then you could do maybe one or two tortillas per serving. Um, if you make them uh, larger, those would be good for tacos, right? But as a side, this is really nice. So we're doing uh, another one. We're putting it in, pressing, open. And, you know, for me, uh, what I love about this is um, I, I find it very relaxing. But this is when we connect with our ancestral past. And, you know, uh, I have to say that one of the most beautiful things that Walter does when he cooks is he sings because there's the songs of his ancestors and he brings that into the food and it's so joyous and it brings me such joy to hear him singing. I just, I just love it. It really connects to the ancestral past. Here again, there's our ping pong size ball, put it in the middle, close, press, open, now let's go over to our cast iron pan and let's take our tortillas and we're going to put them on. So this is a seasoned cast iron pan. Uh, we don't want oil, uh, but we do want it seasoned. And we're going to put this down. Um, your pan should be pretty hot. Uh, I think in this size, I could probably fit five. Put that down. And well, let's do four. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, a kitchen towel that's clean and dry. And maybe Chef Walter can just show you guys those tortillas cooking. And they're beautiful. Uh, I have a little spatula. So we're going to be using the uh, spatula. And a dry, clean kitchen towel. I think my favorite type of uh, kitchen towel is the, um, the, what we call flour sack. These work really well. And you're going to let that tortilla cook uh, between one and two minutes. 
And then I have a basket here. So I'm going to put my basket down and we can put that in. And you're going to let this cook until now. I like a little bit of brown spots on my tortillas. Uh, I think it adds not only character, but uh, it really makes for a nice tortilla. So as they cook, they're going to start to bubble just a little. That bubbling is what tells you that the to corn tortilla is cooking and almost ready done. And another sign, okay, for those of you maybe that have never made these, is that it will start to curl up the end just a little bit. And again, what that is telling you is that that masa is cooking and it's gonna be ready to flip over. So here you can see uh, that one, we're gonna flip this one. Beautiful, that one's starting to curl. Flip it over, you can see those beautiful little brown spots. Ooh, that is a gorgeous tortilla. And now we're just gonna continue to let it cook on that side. And while it's cooking, I'm gonna make some more uh, tortillas that I'm gonna put in because I'll put these in the bowl. So here again, I come back to my workstation. And now, this is really good to know. If your dough, and we're very dry here in New Mexico, gets uh, too dry, you could just wet your fingers or put a little bit of moisture on that dough and that will keep it from cracking. Because what happens is if the corn tortillas get too dry, they will crack and uh, it's just not as flavorful. It's not as good. So we don't, definitely don't want to do that. And here again, and you're going to get so quick and so good at this and you're going to enjoy the process. Corn, oh, the smell of it. Um, it connects us to the ancestral past, to uh, ancestors that ate these tortillas for health and wellness. Uh, if you want to sing, that's what Walter does, right, Chef Walter? You, you add those songs and just bring that goodness, that essence of life uh, into what you're doing. Don't forget we're feeding uh, those that we cherish and those that we love, and we're nurturing them uh, as cooks and as chefs. And it's a very important part of what we do and how we do it. So uh, lots of lessons there. Here again, I have, uh, this is my fourth one. Perfect. So I am going to just put this right here. I'm going to come over. I think my tortillas are done. And what I'm going to do is put these in the basket. And we're going to cook some more corn tortillas. So let's take these, maybe Chef Walter, and let's do one more batch for everybody to see. Put that down. My pan is nice and hot, which is important when cooking these. And we're gonna cook them until they start. Now, the ones that are cooked, you can fold into that towel. I'm gonna show you my, my chef's secret here. I take a non-smelling, non-coated uh, bag, and I put that on the outside, a little plastic bag, because what that do is it seals in, but we don't want the corn tortillas to actually touch the bag, we want it sealed in the towel. So this is a really good way, see, to keep things moist. And then when I'm done, I can actually seal this and hold them and they'll hold for a couple of hours. And uh, Chef Walter and I do this quite often. So here we're turning, look at those beautiful brown spots on oh, the corn tortillas. Isn't that lovely? We're gonna cook those. What you have to remember is that the, the thicker the tortilla, the longer it takes to cook. So we don't want them too thick because then there's a lot of dough and we don't want them too thin because then they get crispy and they burn. So there's, uh, that's probably the hardest thing to decide is uh, how thick or how big. But if you're using a press, uh, some kitchens actually have automatic tortilla presses. Um, and that is another way uh, to do that so that, um, but you'd have to be making a lot. Those are mostly in uh, restaurants and 
uh, places that make lots of tortillas. But I find that making them by hand uh, is the most efficient way to do them um, economically, uh, but also uh, in terms of uh, uh, time uh, and um, not that hard. So it's, uh, it's, it's really a good way to do that. So again, if your dough is getting too dry, don't forget, we're gonna make our, this is our last batch. So we're gonna have about, oh, 12 or 13 tortillas out of this one batch. And so you would calculate, uh, yeah, perfect. I think. So we'll do 13. So um, how many tortillas do you need? And then just, you could times uh, the recipe by uh, that amount for the amount of people that you're feeding in the kitchen. So I have four more. Let's take our tortillas. We're gonna put them in the basket and we'll cook one last batch. And uh, you'll see how quickly that was. It didn't take that long. Uh, we were able to do this relatively quickly. We have our seasoned cast iron pan. And here, then I just have one more to do. And easy to do. Uh, not a lot of dishes. And uh, mm, the smell. I just can't tell you how wonderful the smell is on these corn tortillas. And we really appreciate Walter uh, zooming in, Chef Walter, and showing us the close-ups of everything. And uh, I know we both just love to cook. We love what we do. And we really want to encourage you to, to really focus on that goodness um, and uh, you, the beauty of cooking. So come on over here. Let's do our last batch. And it should go quicker once your pan is hot. Look at those beautiful. And you know, this is a great tool. It's inexpensive. I call this a fish spatula, but you want any flat spatula to be able to turn. This is thin. You could use any spatula, but this is uh, really nice. Look at those beautiful spots. And we have. Uh, our tortillas uh, just about done and um, amazing. We did this relatively quickly. These are uh, healthy bread. These are native, culturally appropriate bread and uh, perfect food to go with a soup or a stew. Uh, I know um, my favorite way to have a tortilla is just with a little bit of sliced avocado or salsa, but we also do uh, like a bean spread or a hummus and um, everyone's gonna have their own favorite way to eat the tortillas and when you dip it in the stew or the soup, it's, it's amazing. And it makes a, a great bread that is inexpensive, native and uh, easy to do. So we're gonna take these and if you'll notice I'm doing this, I'm touching, right? Because as they pop, you can actually feel that bread cooking. And then what I do is I just stack them and I put them in my basket. Beautiful. And then I'm going to show you the last thing, which is that you can take your towel and fold it and cover it. And then once we're done, you would just take your bag and seal it. And these will hold while you get ready for your meal. Perfect. So uh, we're going to uh, end this. This is uh, an easy dish to do. Thank you so much, Chef Walter, for doing such a great job filming. And uh, we're going to get ready. The next thing that we're going to do is the no fry fry bread. And that's made with an unbleached flour and the blue corn no fry fry bread. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make no fried fry bread. So the history of fry bread is really interesting. How did fry bread come to be? Um, this comes from relocated tribes and the government issuing foods or rations to those displaced tribes. They 
the ancestors came up with a great recipe called fried red. And that's where the Indian taco was born. Uh, we're, because we're focused on health and wellness and we wanna make things a little healthier. We're gonna do the same dough. Many of you probably know how to do this or you grew up with a mom or an auntie or a grandma that did this, uh, same dough, but we're not gonna fry it. We're gonna grill it. And we call that bread, Chef Walter and I, and he's done this a lot in his community on the Navajo Nation, is to make it healthier. First of all, you save money on the oil or the lard because you don't need to fry it. And second of all, it doesn't have that same fat. And you know, be, fried bread is good. We just don't want to do it every day. So this bread is a great alternative to not eating fried bread every day. Walter in the background is saying sometimes. So he calls fried bread a sometimes food, okay? So we're gonna start with the regular batch of bread and we're gonna make that first. And it really only has uh, three ingredients plus water. We're gonna add a little bit of kosher salt. I have my unbleached all-purpose flour and then I have baking powder. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm mixing that uh, together. And then, uh, you know, you can just take a spoon and mix those ingredients. And then we're gonna use warm water. Okay, there's my foundation to my fried bread dough. And most of you know this. Uh, and we're gonna warm water. So warm water will help that baking powder start to uh, emulsify. So again, I'm gonna start to pour the water in. I'm using a spoon and then I'll, I'll revert back to my hands and you can use hands or gloves, but again, no uh, uh, jewelry and no uh, nail polish or anything like that on your hands. Uh, and we always have very short nails as chefs so that uh, our hands remain as clean as possible. And uh, here we are, you can see that dough starting to form. And you know, Walter's gotten really good at making dough. So I will say uh, that there's something um, very nice about a man that can make, uh, a chef that can make some good dough. So here I have my bread. I usually like to uh, take it out of the bowl. Uh, you're gonna need a little extra bowl of flour and we're gonna need to start to knead that, okay? So I take it out and then I, put it back in. And so kneading is a little different. You know, for the corn tortillas, what we did was we just mixed it, but kneading is a little more uh, um, robust, for lack of a better word. Uh, this is a little more uh, intense. It's, it's a dough. And so we really want to take that dough and bring it together. Uh, we want that dough to start to emulsify and to be uh, together. So we're gonna use our hands and really start to work that dough. I usually uh, turn it and roll it. I think Chef Walter does kind of the same thing um, on our surface. Okay, you can see it starting Add the flour as you need it and pushing. So I push down and then roll, push down, and then roll. Hopefully everybody can see that. And using, you're seeing, it's starting to come together and really start to look, right, like a dough. And you want your surface just nicely floured. And look at that. Oh, and you can start to feel the beautiful softness of this dough. So you're pushing down, rolling, if your hands get sticky, just get a little flour on them. And so this is called kneading. And uh, it's a nice way, you know, breads are interesting because it's your hands. And so all the thoughts, all the things that we have uh, on us go into the dough. And some cooks say, don't make dough when you're mad because then that anger goes in. Other cooks say that you want to have the good thoughts of the ancestors and the thoughts of those that came before and the thoughts 
and then we're going to make this delicious dough. Look at that. It's beautiful. It's soft. It's moist. Not too moist, right? And we have, it doesn't take too long. Uh, and all you want to do is knead it until it is formed into a nice dough. And then what you're going to do, look at that. Gorgeous. Beautiful. It's just beautiful bread. We have a nice batch and it has to rise. Um, the recipe says at least 30 minutes. Walter and I like to do a little bit longer than that, but we've made a nice ball. We're going to put it back in our bowl. You can see the dough in there and we're going to let it rise. Uh, what I usually do is take a little bit of plastic wrap. You can take a warm towel and we're just going to cover it, keep it in a nice warm place and uh, set it to the side. Okay. Perfect. So the next one we're going to do is we're going to show you guys how to do the blue corn. And the blue corn is a little different in that it's a little heavier, uh, a little bit harder to work with. I think both Chef Walter and I feel that it's because it's got that corn, well, the corn is going to add nutrients, but it will make it a little bit harder to work with. The same if you're using whole wheat. You could also do this with whole wheat. Whole wheat's the heaviest uh, just because the gluten in the flour, uh, there's less of it. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our bowl, same recipe. The only thing we're adding is blue corn meal. All right, so we've got salt, baking powder, corn. Again, we're going to take our spoon and just mix that together. Okay. Look at that. And you can see the corn. So the blue corn adds not only a beautiful color, but nutrients. Look at that. Gorgeous, right? So, and then we want a warm water again. So we'll get our warm water. And same thing. Okay, so we've got our corn and our flour mixed together. And now we're going to get that dough mixing and then we're going to let it rise. Okay, a little bit more. Same thing. So I'm mixing with a spoon and then I'm going to remove it from the bowl and use the flour to help uh, integrate that dough. Okay, so you can start mixing in your bowl. And again, uh, thinking good thoughts, good. And you can feel it, you're gonna feel it. It's gonna be a heavier dough, definitely a little heavier, but it's going to add those additional nutrients. So of course, uh, always worth that extra effort to do that. So we're gonna mix and infuse that dough together. A little bit dry, so I'm gonna finish using the rest of my water here. There we go. And kneading. And you know, who said that those grandmas don't have pectoral muscles? You're gonna feel a little bit of the muscle uh, as you start to do this because you need your uh, muscles in this. It's pretty amazing. It takes some force and it takes a little bit of uh, using those upper pectoral muscles to get this dough to knead together. So here it's starting to come together. You can see on my cutting board and I'll use a little additional flour as needed, okay? And I have a tiny bit of water left, keeping that dough kind of moist because it's a little bit drier for this. And we want, same thing, kneading. You'll start to feel the elasticity uh, in the dough. And 
then pushing down, rolling, just like you did the other dough on your work surface. Oh, look at that, gorgeous. So it is heavier. It is a little bit heavier and um, a little bit drier. So if you feel that you need a tiny bit more water, you can add just a tiny bit to that dough. There you go. Look at that, gorgeous. And then, whoo, nice. And you know, the more you do this, the more you'll feel it. I think Walter's gotten really good at feeling the dough. Again, it should be moist, not so moist that it sticks, but not so dry that it doesn't. And thinking our good thoughts again, look at that beautiful dough and the beautiful color, the blue. So there it is, it's wonderful. So then the same thing, we're gonna put it back into our bowl. We have a nice dough. And then the same thing, we're gonna cover it with a little bit of plastic and let it rise in the background. So plastic wrap uh, or a warm towel and cooking classes are magic. You know that, right? So we have some dough already made so that we can quickly continue on. And I have my blue and my white dough. And what I'm gonna do is just do a little bit of clean up here. And I think the easiest way that we like to clean our cutting board is to flip it over. So I have a towel holding it down into place and then I can use that wet towel to wipe and then take that towel. We wanna make sure that our cutting board doesn't move. Now we have a clean work surface and I am going to show you how to roll out. I'm probably gonna need a little more flour, so I'm just gonna fill a little more flour in that bowl because we're gonna be rolling these out and grilling it. Uh, again, any brand of all-purpose flour will work perfectly fine. So whatever you have uh, access to and you can order. So we're gonna start with the all-purpose. This is the plain bread. Uh, the dough's been sitting and rising. And um, same thing, basically. I'm gonna take a, a ball. We don't want too big. Uh, we like to make ours just because of the plain, no bigger than uh, six inches. And then I'm gonna take a rolling pin. And Chef Walter, he has a really big one. Uh, I like a little bit smaller, but whatever size you have in your kitchen or you feel comfortable with will work uh, perfectly fine. And then we're gonna roll up. Now, some of you may say, how could they be rolling out the dough? Uh, rye bread's always been made with your hands. You can make it with your hands. And there are grandmas and aunties that are so good and so quick at doing this that uh, they don't need a rolling pin. But for the rest of us, and the grandmas gave us permission, huh, Walter? Yeah, so uh, we have permission and we're just gonna take our rolling pin, try and I turn it, try and make it as round as possible, but it is a handmade dough, so perfectly fine to, uh, and I'll, I'll go ahead and ha make two, just so that we can uh, have those ready and I can show you uh, the grilling process. So here again, there's my, there's my bread. I want a little bit of flour on each side. Rolling, turning, rolling, turning. It's almost sort of methodical, right? There's a little bit of a, another song in there. And I, I think I know in Walter's tribe, they have a, actually a fry bread song. So other tribes have fry bread songs. And so uh, those are the thoughts again. And fry bread, you know, it did, it did really help the ancestors. Uh, they would have perished. And so this bread uh, has a, a historic significance um, in uh, all native traditions and uh, very, very important. All right, so we're going to now take our dough and for this, I'm going to be using actually something uh, that we just call, we call it a Santa Fe grill. And uh, it's a little grill. We first learned about this grill at the Santa Fe School of Cooking, 
But over here, I have this grill, and it has handles on it. So maybe Chef Walter will head over here, and we can take a look at this. And so here's the grill, and it has handles and a mesh. And you know, every tribe has different ways. I know um, in, uh, we have a friend who's from Apache and they call this uh, a racket bread because this reminded them of a racket, right? Uh, but you could use any piece of mesh, even one of those uh, meshes that um, you would use like for cookies that, you know, when you dry it. And then what you're gonna start to notice, you can actually see it fairly immediately is you're gonna start to get bubbles. See the bread starting to just bubble a little. And uh, those bubbles mean that it's cooking. And I've got two, so I can speed up the process here. We're gonna use the same basket. We're not, the, we have corn tortillas the one, but the same, style basket we want to have a towel so again I love the flour sack towels I've got uh, a plastic bag on the outside to keep things moist and then my uh, clean dry kitchen towel and then here are the bubbles I'm going to flip it over and you can start to see that it's got some grill marks and it's starting to cook here again is the second one same thing. We're just going to flip that over. Ooh, look at that. Gorgeous, right? And then if any part isn't cooked enough, you can always do what we call uh, customizing this grilling process. Now, some of the Pueblos, instead of using a grill, use a very hot cast iron pan. So the same way we made the corn tortillas, you would take your dough, put it in the cast iron pan, and they just call it tortilla bread right? So instead of a plain tortilla, it's a tortilla bread. And I know uh, um, some of the different Pueblos do this, and that's a perfectly fine way. So if you, if you have that flat griddle and you want to make these on the flat griddle, uh, that's perfectly fine, right? That's going to work out. And then our bread's going to pop. Uh, it sort of reminds me of a pita bread or a pocket bread, uh, any of those breads. And um, then once it's cooked, we're going to put it in, and then we would go ahead and roll out uh, the other dough. So I had one little part I wasn't happy with, so I'm just going to cook that additionally. Uh, Walter's gotten, Chef Walter's really good at this, uh, making bread. He makes all the bread now, and he's so good at it and fast. And again, practice. The more you do and the more you make it, the easier it will get. Okay, so here we have our second bread. We're going to close our basket, leave the flame on, and then I'm going to show you how to do the blue corn. Okay, so here's our blue corn dough that's been sitting. And uh, look at that gorgeous color. Beautiful. See the corn in there? Really, really nice. Compare it. Yeah, and let's take a look. Walter said, let's compare. So here's the white flower. See the difference in color? Here's the blue. So there's a definite difference in color, and there's going to be a difference in texture as well. So let's take the blue. Same thing. I'm going to take a little bit of that dough. And again, you'll get really good and really quick at this uh, over time. So again, you're really trying to do like a ping pong, ping pong or uh, golf ball size. And sprinkle a little flour, and then you just pat it down, okay? Then we're gonna take our rolling pin and turn it. And you do want this fairly thin, it cooks better. See how thin that is? That's probably good, right, Chef Walter? Yeah, so. Not too thin. All right. So let's put that to the side. Let's make one more so we can do two at a time. And again, make our little ping pong size. You wanna have it so it won't stick and then we'll roll. Look at that, All right? I'm just turning so that it rolls out. Beautiful, right? Okay, 
So now we're gonna go back over to the stove with our breads. We're gonna put it on the flame. So we have one on this flame, one on this flame, and we're going to cook it. Uh, if you're making a lot, you might wanna have a separate basket for the blue uh, versus the white. And again, it's gonna start to bubble. Uh, so this one is starting to bubble. And uh, just like it would if you were frying. So frying, when you fry the bread, it does the exact same thing. That's what's so fascinating about this, right? So here we have this dough. So I'm gonna flip this over. Look at that, beautiful. See that blue color has remained. Here are the bubbles on the second one. And the bubbles are what tell you that it's ready to flip over, okay? So see beautiful bubbles uh, forming on that bread. The flame is at a medium. So now I can flip over, look at that. And then we're just gonna cook uh, the other side. So not too thin, not too thick on the dough. And um, then uh, once that bread has cooked, we, I use tongs. Chef Walter uses his hands sometimes, uh, but I like tongs. So you, unless you have calluses, you don't wanna uh, burn. And then we just take that bread and we're gonna put that in the basket. And uh, let's cook this one just a little bit more, right, Chef? Yeah. And um, then we will uh, have some breads done. And so same process, you're gonna use up all the dough, you're gonna use all of it, it's gonna get put in the basket, just like we did with our corn tortillas, and then we would get ready to serve it. So same thing, I'm gonna just cover the breads, and then what I do is I just take my bag and seal it. This will last uh, easily for several hours, okay? And then when we're ready to uh, serve, we can just take those baskets and put that bread as an accompaniment to our soup or our stew. And so we just wipe this so I can show you the different breads that we made today. So we have uh, our all purpose flour bread that we made and we have our blue corn, no fry, fry bread that we made. And we have, see the difference? There is definitely a difference in color. Uh, they both smell good. Oh, I, the only thing about virtual is you guys can't smell and I wish you could smell because it's so amazing. And then here are our corn tortillas. And uh, the plastic has kept them warm. They're still warm and I made my other bread. And so here again, we would see those beautiful corn tortillas. And so we made three different kinds of bread today and uh, they're amazing. So uh, Chef Walter's gonna rejoin us in just a second and we will, uh, Close, close our class. And uh, we want you to join us for future episodes because we have a lot of episodes and a lot of good and healthy food that we want you to learn how to make. And we wanna be able to feed to our elders and community members for health and wellness. So we are just so honored that you came into our kitchen for this brief time and come on back in Chef Walter. Thank you so much for your great job filming. Uh, we've really enjoyed being with you today and uh, we hope you'll continue to cook uh, these wonderful breads. Which is your favorite of the three? He likes the all purpose. Uh, I'm a corn tortilla girl, but we, we both love the blue corn. It's just, Slightly different, oh, makes the best Indian taco, right? Mm -hmm. mm, amazing. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope you'll join us for future episodes. Lots to learn, 
lots of cooking to do. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Frank and Chef Whitewater. The recipes and more may be found at the links below. We hope you enjoyed today's lesson. Thank you for joining us.